Welcome to Chewing the Cud with Lee Robertson and Mike Benyon Rowe. And sometimes there are words and sometimes there are sentences. But not all of them make sense. What have you got for us today, Mike? <laughs> well, I have a story about something large being stuck in a slightly larger hole. And then we've got a game of the week for you to enjoy. <clears throat> On screen now, you can see our social media contact info. Just look for at the Cud TV. And as names of people who have dropped us a line go along the bottom of my chins, we go to Lee and the Showbiz News. So earlier this year, mm. we sadly lost Olivia Newton-John. Did we? We didn't lose her, okay. as in <laughs> like, she died. She fall by the back of the sofa. No, she died. <laughs> OK. Yeah. Um, and as with some... Some people... We're talking waxworks again. No, we're not talking waxworks again. <laughs> we're talking ghosts. Well, the, Olivia Neogen had, had a daughter, has a daughter, um, Chloe Latanzi. Um, not Newton John. I wonder why that is. Mm. Anyway. Was it because Newton John was her stage name rather than her was actual it? name? Was it? Oh, okay. Anyway, Olivia Newton John, Olivia Newton John, <laughs> Olivia <laughs> Newton John's <laughs> daughter uh -huh. claims that the late star has shown up six times. Since her tragic death. Okay, Six so times. grieving daughter thinks she sees her mother. So, well, you know, we, we, we should not poo-poo these things because we don't know if it is true. So we've got a, a melange. A melange? Is that a, is that a word of, no. of Olivia Newton-John's there? <laughs> a you menage with a well. <laughs> No, I don't know. Menage is a threesome. Threesome. But there's lots of Olivia's on screen now, just to remind yourself of who Olivia Newton-John is. Um, so basically, what, she, what her daughter is saying is that... She believes that her mother has been appearing as a blue orb um, in her photographs. Um, so she gave that she, she was... What? It's called camera flare. Well, or a ghost. Or a spirit. We don't know. So the, her daughter has kind of taken over her mum's role in the, the, the charity that she set up before her death. Okay. Um, and it's called the Olivia... The Olivia Lee? Yeah, it's called the... Uh, with her name I don't today. know. It's called the Olivia Newton-John Cancer and Wellness Centre. Okay. Um, and she said, I was very happy, and it became kind of like a thing. Um, but she said, it's just not something you kind of like talk about openly. Um, we've got a picture of Olivia Newton-John and her daughter, just so that people know who okay. they are. Um, that's not Olivia Newton-John's daughter. I think that's Olivia Newton-John appearing as an orb. <laughs> I, okay. Oh, never mind. It's fine. Um, so basically, what she's saying is, energy can neither be created nor destroyed. Correct. So, so you agree with that? That's science. That That's is science. That is. So her keeping her promise. So, so what Olivia Newton John did was, she, what she before she died, she said, "If there is any way that I can come back to let you know that I'm fine, mm -hmm. I will try my best to find a way." Okay. So she said, so she's keeping a promise and showing up. She's shown up about six times as this blue aqua orb. Okay. It's okay. not just one of she said, it's not just one of those silly reflections reflect. on an iPhone. It's quite amazing. Whatever my mum puts her mind to, she does it. And who's to say that it isn't? Who's to say it isn't grief? Well, there is that. But I think it's quite nice to believe that you're although I I believe, mm -hmm. or I was told by psychic ones, that when you pass over, you have a period of about six months where you kind of like go into psychic intensive care, where you just have a little rest to recover from whatever happened in your life. So you kind of have a bit of a rest, wait, and then you go, oh, I'm ready to either... Like a six-month counselling session. Someone sits you down on the couch and how does that make you feel? Well, you know, you know I, I'm not going to poo-poo it. I'm going to say it could happen, it could not. And I like to I like to think that it might might do. Yeah. You don't believe it because you're because you're dead inside. Um, so there's nothing coming inside. out of you. What? No? If you have if you're saying that that you believe in the soul, which is fine if that's what you believe, and you believe in a soul, that's great. Good for you. Let's move on because I can feel anger rising. Yeah. Okay. So, are you aware of the country artist Reba McIntyre? No. No. Um, very popular in America. Okay, not American. Very, so very, know. very drag race friendly. Lots of okay. drag um, race contestants have done Reba in uh, <laughs> in, in visual form. Anyway, she. Are you aware of Troy Sivan? I am indeed okay. aware of the Power Top Twink. 
power top twink. He doesn't really like that, apparently, that that title that has been bestowed on him. Anyway, so the country music legend appeared on um, something called Watch What Happens Live, which is an American mm -hmm. uh, celebrity interview program um, with Troy mm -hmm. um, and got a little bit kind of kerfuffled. So the host is Andy Cohen, mm -hmm. um, who, mm, yeah, I'm not a massive fan of Andy Cohen. Okay. He kind of set up that whole franchise of the Real Housewives of, which basically is women screaming at each other and tearing each other have down. too much money. It's, it's, not, it's not a good thing. Um, anyway, he does this, this watch what happens live and has stars on. Um, and basically, they, they were asking questions um, that were sent in from X, formerly Twitter. Um, and one of them was about poppers. So he said to, to Reba, Reba, have you ever done poppers? Um, Reba quickly looked at Troy mm -hmm. and said, I don't think so. What's a popper? Troy laughed and said, we're going to talk about that during the break. During the break. We'll, talk, we'll, we'll explain what it is during the break. Just, um, just explain that, because there could have been people watching at home that had the same question. Think you could, you know, what? What's an opportunity to educate and inform It's America, them. and they don't... They can talk superficially about gayness, oh, but not, not deeper. Not, not logistics. Let's not, not use logistics the word deeper. About it. No. Let's um, talk about gayness going deeper. Mm, I, don't think, I don't think Troy is a stranger to... The popper? To, to the poppers. No, I don't think so. Um, Especially after parties, Christmases... That kind of stuff. Um, here we have a picture of him here with his legs betwixt his the thighs betwi of a gentleman. His head between. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm. I, I mean, is he, he? Does does he float your he's boat? He's very cute, but he's very skinny as well. He ah, his no. recent video. Mm. Now that's not him. No, it's not. That's his recent video uh, for something to give each other, where he has embraced his inner drag. Um, mm -hmm. You your reaction was a bit oh. Yeah. Are you not keen on that? A bit. So I enjoy his music a lot. Mm. Right. I think sometimes he chooses themes that don't sit very well with me. Okay. So this particular song is about um, sleeping with a straight man. Okay. And seducing a straight man, which, you know, I, I've, I've done that same, someone that's questioning their sexuality and I've been a, an experiment, shall we say. Um, no issue with that. But he, he's the drag, dressing up in drag to fetishize the drag community a little bit. Mm. Well, it just doesn't quite sit well with me. Oh, wow. It, yeah, it just feels a bit like he's encouraging the fetishization. Is that a word, fetishization? Fetishization. Fetishing, making the drag, drag community and the trans community a fetish. Yeah. And it just doesn't, mm, doesn't quite hit me. Well, I mean, it's, it's similar to what was Sam Smith's song earlier last year, Body Shop. Mm -hmm. That was similar. Unholy. Unholy. Chop shop, as I like to call it. Yeah, you call it yeah. chop shop, yeah. The chop shop. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I have listened. I, I was aware of Troy previously. It mm -hmm. wasn't really my thing. Quite enjoyed that song about the rush. Mm -hmm. that Which one. could be a song about sort of like being in love with someone or the fact that... Yeah, although he did get criticised... Puffing down poppers. ...for the video. Mm -hmm. Not being particularly inclusive, as in lots of very thin fit... Looking yes. young people. It was an Abercrombie and Fitch yeah. advert. And then he kind of tried to make up for a little bit on the second video where he used slightly different body shaped yeah, people. And so again, I, I understand what he's saying. You know, that was his aesthetic and it was the, the video for Rush was very bros, bros, bros. And so it had that aesthetic mm. and I get it. I just... Mm, Have I you think, fapped off to it? No. He's just, he's missing the mark a little bit for me. I don't know whether that's because I'm not his target audience. No. Being an older gay. Um, no. Or, yeah. whether, or whether it's just, I'm just a bit sensitive or just, it's just not oh, hitting the mark. Okay. It's just not hitting the mark for me. And oh. Enjoy the songs. Enjoy them lyrically. Have videos. a dance to them at the discotheque. In the car. Having a bop. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. Well, we'll move on then. Yeah, okay. I think we've made a point there. Um, I'm a big fan of, of the film Burlesque with Christina Aguilera. Yeah. <laughs> And and um, Stanley Tucci. Tucci. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I'm very excited because it's going to be made into a, a musical. Oh, it is a musical. The stage. Oh. Well, yeah. On stage. Okay. This is, this is the original poster. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who, who, who don't know... Who weren't was, alive when it was... Who weren't alive when it was out. It didn't do very well at the box office. No, because it wasn't a great movie. It wasn't a great film. It was a flop. The, we the gays, we embraced it. We loved it. We danced to the music. Because it had Aguilera, hot guys with tops off, and Cher. Over singing in Basques. Always over singing. Anyway, it's going to be turned into a stage show. 
Todrick Hall has written it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, who's who's very musical mm -hmm. himself. Um, and it's um, coming next year. They're not sure who they're going to cast. Um, but she, Christina Aguilera is going to be executive producer on the project, which means she'll probably um, be teaching the the character that's going to play her character how to like that. Very, very, very. Uh, it will also feature original songs written for the movie, along with additional numbers written by uh, Todrick Hall. Oh, so I need to pay a day for. I'm excited about this. I like yeah. it. Okay, uh, and that is going to be coming to the West End soon. Okay. That's the end of this week's Showbiz News. Nice. I apologise for my rants. No, I'm not apologising at all. You're welcome. I like to encourage debate. Um, stick around, because after this, it's Mike with the buzz. <laughs> You're watching Chewing the Cud with Lee and Mike. Now let's get ready to find the innards of the internet, as it's Mike and the buzz. <laughs> Have you ever sought revenge on someone? Constantly. Ah, what's your favourite method of revenge? Killing them? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I just just subtle ways that perhaps they are not aware of. <laughs> <laughs> so subtly it doesn't cause any inconvenience whatsoever. But made me feel better. Okay. Nothing particular want to share. Just rearranging things on the desk. Okay. Trumping on a book, something like that, putting it back and going, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Fighting on a face mask, and that's a good one. Well, we don't really do that. We don't have face masks Covid doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. No. Um, okay, so this is a story about a woman who's basically... She's gone for a revenge tactic that's been ongoing for 15 years. Ooh, that is, that is, a, that is a legacy. Okay. Um, and again, slightly inconveniencing someone. Slightly inconveniencing yeah. somebody. So the story, story started 15 years ago. Um, she was at a comedy gig. Mm. And the comedian called her friend a stupid fat B-word. Okay. Right. And she took, took offence to that and said, I'm going to ruin your life. Um, and so she set up Facebook accounts that then post him messages directly oh. of spoilers to all TV shows. Oh, okay. So she's spoiling lots of his TV shows, no matter what he's watching. Yeah, he'll have seen a spoiler for it. Um, okay. So she spent her life finding spoilers and sending him the spoilers. 15 years. 15 Is it anybody years. famous? That she's doing this to? Just as a comedian. Just a comedian. Yeah, I think we've protected his name for... Oh, OK. We'll not start doing it to him. Um, but it spends 15 years she spent sending him like spoilers like Game of Thrones and all that sort of stuff. And Well, I mean, that doesn't... I don't give a... That doesn't affect me. But you, mm -hmm. that would really be... A, you know, because you did have a bit of a hissy fit a couple of weeks ago when I said something about Doctor Who that was commonly on the internet that everybody knew about. To avoid. And you were very angry about that it. managed to avoid. Mm. Yeah, the rules are no spoilers about Doctor Who and you broke that rule. Just send takeaways round. <laughs> you have to pay for them. No, not if you... Uh, you pay for them now. Um, on the apps. Post things through his letterbox. A fun thing to do is buy keys. Keys. Yeah, so lots of like old... You can buy like a bag of old keys off eBay, mm. like £10. Right, and then a bunch of those address tags, right, and put their address on it and mm. tag it and just drop them randomly. Oh, okay. Yeah, or phone numbers and stuff so they get continued. I found oh. your keys. Or that thing that that woman, that, that well, was it the Australian who put a poster up saying, if you do your Chewbacca yeah, impression to this number, you could win. Yeah. And she was just like constantly people going, Rawr. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah, that feeds what... the soul more. <laughs> mm. than spoiling someone's TV viewing. Mm, just shit on somebody's doorstep. Don't do that. That's a crime. Set fire to it. The step? Doorstep? The, the poop. The poop. Just the, well, you poop, in a, you poop in a bag. Really? You poop in a bag? <laughs> a paper bag. A paper bag, not a plastic bag. Paper bag. Pop it on the doorstep. Uh -huh. Set it a fly. Set it a fly. Set it a fly. Set it a flame. Uh -huh. Ring the doorbell. Person opens it. Oh no, there's a fire. Stands on it. Stamps on it to put it out. Poop all over the shoe. You ring the doorbell. Your face shows up on their app because they've got a ring doorbell. We're wearing a balaclava. Sounds a little sinister. Balaclava. We're wearing a balaclava walking up. Next story. So someone put on a balaclava walking up with a bag of poop. 
You'll be doing the cover of darkness. You don't do it in the broad in the daylight. <laughs> While they're asleep. No, just, just you know, on a dark evening, about 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, when the sun has gone down. The ring doorbell, you can still see people. Not even wearing a black cloth. <laughs> Mike, it's just not, don't, don't get too upset about it. There's just a way of doing it. I'll okay. do it to you later. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll be able to sell it to you from the green plastic bag, though, rather than the paper. Can't wait if I can set that on fire. No, you can't. It's plastic. No. no. I'll try, though. Yeah. Because it's not like you've ever shit in a plastic bag. Oh, we don't talk um, about that. Let's no, move on. We don't, talk, we don't talk about that, do we not? No. no I think we do. Um, okay, cool. So, moving on. Do you have a nemesis in life? A nemesis. A nemesis. I do. Who is it? I'm not allowed to say. No, I'm not. It's a recent nemesis. Is it me? No. <laughs> okay. No, but I do. Is it Sue Pollard again? No. 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 I is it someone? Them. Is it someone famous? No, it's not a famous person. There are famous people that I just instantly dislike. They've done nothing to me. Okay. I just instantly dislike them. Jack Black, for example. Can't okay. stand the man. Never done anything to me. Just don't like him. Okay. But I do have a nemesis in real life that I'm working on at the moment as to how to destroy them. Okay. Emotionally, physically, all the physically, all the, all the Khalees. All the Khalees? Yes. Is it Khalees Nolan? No, it's not. Okay. Barbara Windsor? No, she's dead. She's dead, Mike. Isn't a celebrity. Oh, okay. It's a real human. No, I'm not telling you. Interested now. Anyway, um, this man, I've got a man who's got a, a nemesis that is attacking him on a daily basis. <laughs> Right, as he's on his way to work. Is it a squirrel? It's worse than a squirrel. Is it a badger? It's worse than a badger, because it can fly. <gasps> Is it a flying badger? <laughs> a flying badger. You could have gone flying squirrel there <laughs> if you went for flying badger. But that's more scary, a flying badger. It's more of a falling with great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it flies at you once. <laughs> Is it... Is it a magpie? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so it's a gentleman who, who on his little... I cycle to work every day. This um, they cycle this... like the puppet out of Saw. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you want to play a game? No. <laughs> I don't know what voice it does. Um, but yeah, every day on his way to work, he gets attacked by the same magpie. Is that a photo fit? Is that a, is that is that been recreated or is it? He's taken it on his. Well, he doesn't look that unhappy. Smiling about it. <laughs> it's, it's. I think that's just a Hollywood teeth. Oh, okay. Is he British? No. Because that doesn't look like a British magpie. <laughs> what? It looks, doesn't look like it's the breed that we have in this country. Right, okay. Just thought you were going a bit BNP there. No, no. Because right. magpies coming but, over it. No, because some magpies. creatures in different countries are the same creature. But, different but they look different. And stuff. Yeah, yeah. A bit like life in general. Hey. Yeah, yeah. So it's, not, it's in the States. Okay. Yeah, this magpie is attacking him. Um, so you can't get a, a go to work without being attacked. It's a little bit handsome. What, the bird? Another man. Okay. Is it called Tippy? Tippy Hundred? You know, the birds. Famous film, Alfred Hitchcock. <laughs> Insert sound effect <laughs> there. Um, Don't need to, just it. What's he done to it? Nothing. It's just Nothing. taken It's just taken an instant. I understand to... that. <laughs> I understand it. I empathise with it. With I support it. Yes. <laughs> so you empathise with supporting yes. a bird attacking someone yeah. randomly just because. Yeah. I'd like to see it sat on a branch on, in a, on a tree outside his house, sharpening its beak in the morning, just ready. <laughs> and if you want to see some sinister <laughs> birds as well, why not ask us where you get them from? At the Cud TV on social media is where to find us. And that brings us nicely to our story of the week. Now, have you ever been stuck in a hole? I've fallen in a hole. <laughs> There's a lot of thought for that. No, I was just wondering, I was just like, have I ever been stuck in a hole? I've fallen. You've fallen. Into a hole. Have we been able to get out yourself, or did you have to get assistance? No, I did that pin arm pinwheeling thing <laughs> for about, <laughs> about 30 yards, going woo! Until I managed to right myself, get my balance back. It was, it was a sexy moment. <laughs> You said pinwheel it. I thought you tried to get out by doing that. No, <laughs> I was walking along and didn't see the whole uh -huh. crater, I'm going to say. So you weren't watching where you were going? No, and I went Whoa! in it, but then managed to upright myself, but then pinwheeled off <laughs> <laughs> to the distance. <laughs> I'll see you this week. 
<laughs> yeah, no one would have noticed you'd fall in a hole because that's how you walk anyway. <laughs> how rude. Anyway, what about holes? Um, so this is a story about a farmer who had to rescue a cow from a sinkhole. <laughs> What's with the face? So... <gasps> Look at the face going, wow, the f did you manage that? <laughs> <laughs> so it's in the States again. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Is that the cow? <laughs> Coming closer. <laughs> no, that's the cow after he'd been rescued. Oh, it's after it's been rescued. Yeah, it survived, so it's good news. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? <laughs> was Did it? Was it on a, is there a diving board up above it that it leapt off <laughs> and landed in the hole? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think mean, there's more to this story. <laughs> <laughs> that, he looks like he's like, he's like going, oh, Daisy, not again. Zoop. <laughs> What's that? Basically, the cow stood there and a sinkhole appeared on the front legs and it just went in. Oh, my goodness. Luckily, the farmer was nearby. Um, I managed to attach, attach a rope to the, one of the back legs and pull it out. With it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but, yeah, cow was safe. Random After, sinkhole. Yeah, just randomly just appears and... Cow went in. <laughs> well, that's that's a, that's a Tracy Emin art installation, isn't it? That is definitely it's, that's going to win the Turner Prize next year, I believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was oh, hang on, just popped his cup of coffee on on the bum hole. <laughs> oh no, you wouldn't want to do that on a cow. <laughs> <laughs> went to get his keys for tractor. <laughs> the coffee gone. Cow's gone. Oh, I've just had a coffee. Sink hole. <laughs> My own private sinkhole, baby. Ah! <laughs> That's disgusting. Cut <laughs> <Get out> your mouth. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> oh my god! If you don't use that sentence in a in a sexy time, I'm going to be very disappointed. Put it in my own private sinkhole, baby. Oh, <laughs> it's horrible. Oh, oh dear. Uh, but that's all from the buzz this oh, week. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Private single. Coming up, we have our game of the week. <laughs> You're watching Chewing the Cud. Now we're going to play the Gobby Game Show fluid version. And this is for the man who will get confused if he should spit or swallow. It's Mike. Always oh, swallow. Game of the week. So, on this game, Mike is going to be gargling um, popular musical choices, and I have to guess what they are. Are you ready, Mike? I am. Have you got your fluid? I have my fluid. Marvel. I have it in a, in, a, in a purple vessel and it's it's not sparkling like yours was. No. Rookie mistake on mine. It was a rookie mistake. Um, um, like you did with me, I'm just going to pick songs and things. And we're starting with a theme tune. A theme tune? A theme tune. Okay. And I would say that that is the theme tune to The Muppet Show. It was indeed the theme tune to The Muppet Show. Well, well, it's so... Because you often are in that position gargling with stuff, it comes naturally to you. What do you mean? You're even playing the type of gag with bodily fluids. I mean, you don't have any gag reflex anymore, so... Well, no, I don't, but that's a different matter. Um, this is a song. A song? Popular song. Is it a little less conversation from Elvis? No, it's uh, Superstition by um, 
um, Stevie Wonder. Oh. Very superstition. I thought it was little more conversation, a little less action. action. Please do, 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 do. <laughs> um, okay. Next one. So this is a theme tune again. Okay. Is it the theme tune to Antiques Roadshow? It is, yeah. Is it? <laughs> oh my god! You think you've got a talent, mate? <laughs> I didn't think you'd get that one. <laughs> 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 okay, next one is a song again. <laughs> I didn't get that one <sighs> quite. I've got to do it again. No. No, it's walking on sunshine by Katrina. Oh, I get it now. Now, now you know the answer. Yes. Okie dokes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this is another song. That's what I Oh. <laughs> Na, na, na. In yesterday by the Beatles. Indeed, it was yesterday by the oh. Beatles. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the Stones, the Beatles, the, the Rolling Stones. We will never not <laughs> do that joke. You know, we have to pay royalties every time you make that joke. <laughs> okay, next one is the theme tune again. Theme tune. Mm -hmm. Oh, is it Doctor Who? It was Doctor Who. Oh, my word. <laughs> I'm doing very well today. Well. You are a legendary cum guzzler. It's on my CV. <laughs> Why are you shocked by that? You've said that before. <laughs> okay. <laughs> song this time. Oh no, it's not. It is a song, yeah. Song, okay. <laughs> Is it? Come a waltzing Matilda with me. Waltzing with Hilda, waltzing with Hilda. Yeah, that was it. Marvellous. Okay, go for another theme tune now. The theme tune to the Wombles. It was, yeah. I like it, I like it a lot. <laughs> but you know, so I'm not gagging and spluttering and slurping. Well! As we said, you have no, no gag reflex anymore. I do have a gag reflex. It's just somewhere different. <laughs> How's it going to be tricky now? What's this? Oh. Mm -mm. Oh, it's, it's, it's got the little liquid in his mouth. Mm -hmm. I forgot what the tune oh, was. Oh, no. I've forgotten the tune. It's gone out of my head. Oh, no. It was the Muffin Man. It was the what? The Muffin the Man? The Muffin Man. Where? The Muffin Man. The Muffin Man? You know the Muffin Man. He lives in Jury Lane. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one's the theme tune. Okay. <laughs> Oh, 
Yeah, Mr. Hitler. Do, 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 do. Um, Dad's army. Yep, Dad's army. Oh wow. What's that? <coughs> we don't want you to aspirate, dear. It's loosened up some phlegm. Ooh. I've had a bit of a cold this week. <laughs> this is going to be tricky, but it's a theme tune again. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. I didn't know that one. What was it? Home and away. Oh! Okay. Oh, in your arms, don't let me go. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, kiddos. Theme tune again. <laughs> it's the theme tune to the A team. It was indeed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's very difficult to go when all you've got in your ear is the guy is saying, Drown, you bastard, drown. I know. It's very offensive. No. I can't get no satisfaction by the Oh Rolling now I now I hear it. By the Rolling Stones. By the Rolling Stones. I'm not, <laughs> not gonna do it not gonna do it twice in a show. Not do it twice in a show, okay. Beatles, the students are ruling who we are doing. <laughs> okay, next one is a theme tune. Okay. <laughs> Star Wars. Yes, Star Wars. You're much better at the theme tunes, I feel. Okay. This is a song. Oh. Do, do. Do 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 Is it Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen? We'll never know. Oh, we'll never know. That was very enjoyable, though. About time. <laughs> Stick around as next. It's Mike, and that's science, that is. <laughs> Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. And now we go and learn something that we can never unlearn. It's Mike, and that's science, that is. That's science, that is. So, have you ever wondered what to do if you ever had a fire? Well, if it is myself personally that is a flame, mm -hmm. I, I would drunk. Dr uh, I would. I would we get drunk. I would get drunk. <laughs> feed the flames. Yeah. <laughs> the real End it fire. quicker. End yeah. it sooner. Yeah. yeah. Completely emoliate myself. Emoliate. But, yeah. If it was a fire within the home, uh -huh. I may. I may put a, a, a damp tea towel over it. <laughs> <laughs> Which you would have, yeah. Um, okay, well, this is, I thought, what's the best way of helping you with a fire? That's to show you how to make a fire extinguisher. Okay. Or, or air cannon. 
An air cannon. An air cannon. So you put it up a little bit and thought about weaponry there, didn't you? Mmm. Okay. Um, and to make the air cannon, you just need a cardboard tube. That one may have some toilet paper wrapped around. You, you need it to not have the toilet yeah. paper wrapped around. Yes. Okay. Um, and this would be fragranced. This was this was um, coconut flavoured. Well, I don't like it when you say flavoured. Scented. Because you don't eat the toilet paper. Why not? Just the... Just... <laughs> The dog does. Well, humans don't eat toilet paper. Think about the dog's taste buds. Um, and then you also need a, a life preservative. One from the Mike Benny and Roll collection of Johnny's. No, well, yeah, but um, we're going with different brands as well. So what you want to do is you want to remove the the, the condom from its its plastic packaging and unfurl it. Must... <laughs> Does the reservoir need to be outward? Well, you just need to unfurl it first. Unfurl it? Because you need it to be... Whilst gently kissing the end. <laughs> I have... I have unfurled my... Calm down. Okay. Now what you want to do is you want to gather, because you didn't want it rolled, you want to gather it up. Gather the... Yeah, so use your fingers to gather it. It's like that song, isn't it? We sow the seeds and gather the condoms of the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you know what's um, nature's condom? Saying no. <laughs> I don't know what is. <laughs> okay, I've rolled it. I've rolled okay. my condom up. Um, and now what you want to do is you want to stretch it over your cardboard tube. Just over the end? Just over the end, like so. Okay. And then what you've created there is something called a diaphragm. Ooh. Okay. And you want to just, you want to peel a little bit of it back so that you've got some stretch on it. Do you know you're giving a posh one to a cardboard tube there, right? <laughs> Just giving the boys in the gallery a little treat. <laughs> and scarring everybody else. <laughs> um, now, in front of you, you will have a candle. I do have a candle. It's a fragrance candle. It's, is it? It is, yes. Yeah, so is it proper. a brand? Is it, a, is it an official brand? It is an official brand. It's a premium quality. Ooh, too. I'm getting... Getting wax. <laughs> it's tropical. I'm getting flame. <laughs> it's a tropical one. Um, but yeah. Um, so what you want to do is to, is to do this. When you pull back the you pull back the condom, mm. okay, it's going to take in air at low pressure at this side and to fill the void that you're creating with the condom over that side. Take okay. in air and fill the void. Yep. That sounds like my life. Mm -hmm. And then when you release your condom from your grip like that. It's going to expel the air at speed. Just like that. How exciting. Okay, and that is an air cannon. Okay. Is this what happens when people queef? Yes. Um, so what we're going to do is you need to aim it at your, your flame as well. Okay. Okay. Promise I've got a loop. My fingers got all looby. Right. So you're going to line it up with your eye because you can see through. Yes. Okay. Aim at the flame. And then fire. Oh, Ooh. unlucky cookie. Take a, take a, a go or two. Oh. I think you could have almost used, say, your breath. You could, but if you've got a lot of candles to blow out. <laughs> Shall I have a go? You have a go. Okay. So I line it up. Mm -hmm. I pull back the teat. Oh! <laughs> 
in one. Go. And now, so that's how you could do fire, but you could also celebrate with this kind of thing. Can so, you know, you're going to, you could, <laughs> yes, you could. Okay. Right. Um, what you could do is you could pop confetti in it. So if you're ever going to a wedding. Oh, I love that idea. Okay, so you've got some, some white confetti. Nothing says romance and happy marriage than a than an old condom on the top of a on top of a bog roll. It's a new condom. Um, so you just pop your confetti in. Into, Does it need to go into the condom? Just into the barrel. Just into the rim? Just into the barrel like that. Okay. Okay, because if it went into the condom it would get sticky. I have done that, Mike. Okay, and then when you're ready, you're going to pull back and release. I'll let you go first. Me go first? Yeah. Congratulations! Oh no! It's gone in, oh no! It's gone into my condom! Oh! What a mess. There we go. And I'm going to do one too, ready? Congratulations on your lifetime of misery. Yay. Oh, boo. Ooh. It yeah. needs to go further down the shaft, Mike. Does it? Yeah. That's what I found. <laughs> I will go all the way down the bottom of my shaft. <laughs> now do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Great show! Oh, I've got a second. I got. A, oh, I've got a third show. Woo! Oh. I've obviously got a teenager. Anyway, um, but that science, that is. That science, that is. Sometimes, sometimes, all you need to turn that frown upside down is a toilet roll tube, mm -hmm. a condom. And lots of little bits of paper. Yeah. That's all you need. It's toilet roll as well, so yeah, it could have come yeah. off the toilet roll. Yeah. Yeah. So how, did it worked at least? Which is a, which is always a bonus with um, <laughs> that science that is. Yeah. Or yeah. crafty queens. Yeah. Um, okay. Cool. So yeah, you got, going to go home and play with this? No. No. You're going to create no. one yourself? I have a I have an actual um, cloche on a stick on a on a metal pole to put out my candles. Poof. Poof. It's not poof. a cloche then. What's it called? A, a tabernacle? No. No. It's not called that. No, what is it? A cloche is designed to cover food. It's, it's a little dangly thing. A little metal thing. Is it a snuffer? Snuffer. Mm. Which is different to a snuff movie. Mm. Yeah, well, <laughs> it is different. indeed, yes. But yeah, it's going to be fun to clean this up because you can just... Woo! Mm. Yeah. That was less successful. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Well. But yeah, luckily that's almost the end of the show for now. Remember to join us on our social media at The Cut TV. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye. Thought you'd me with a good Take time. Boom. <laughs>